I think she's staying with us now. Julia Gilead said, and I quote, our future growth relies on competitiveness and innovation, skills and productivity, and these in turn rely on the education of our people. As we focus on tech today, we want to position business owners and young entrepreneurs for borderless growth as we rub minds with our highly tech-driven CEO, Uzo Madozi, who is one of Nigeria's leaders in the financial sector. He is the founder of Sparkle, a mobile-first platform for Nigeria's retail sector, using technology to power financial inclusion at scale. Now, Sparkle is a lifestyle and financial ecosystem providing similar solutions to Nigeria's retailers, SMEs, and individuals. Leveraging on technology and data, Sparkle is leading a new generation of digital only businesses licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And he's joined the conversation again this evening. But first, I want to quickly come to AK, AK, the, our SME guru. What are you looking forward to tonight's conversation, finding solutions to SMEs? Well, what, what I'm looking for is to enter into the mind, mind of Uzoma and see how he wants to use Sparkle to address all the myriad of problems we have in the sector. Absolutely. And yesterday was very interesting because he touched on some things like collaboration. Mm -hmm. he, he even touched something very important, which is our identity crisis, mm -hmm. which is really affecting access to finance, access to a lot of other things that we should get. So I'm really looking into his perspective and his view of using technology to solve some of those problems. Absolutely. So you can also join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. 8038466. Thank you again, Uzoma Dozi, for joining us. This Thank you for having me for two days. <laughs> yes, so we, we dragged you out for two days and we're happy Good. that you honored Good. the invitation. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um we are at the fourth revolution, Abby. Industrial yes. revolution, that's what they say. And this is the age of AI, robotics, and all of that. Um, so what do you think is the biggest impediment in terms of technology growth in Nigeria before maybe we broaden it to Africa? <laughs> it's definitely access. Now, access, you can break down access into a few things. Access affordability, access reach, access education. But my, I think the most important one is leadership. Okay. Digital, tech, digital leadership. You, I mean, like, and if you look at industrial revolutions, I mean, like the first, second, third, and now the fourth, they have been driven and championed by leaders, whether it's leaders in the private sector or leaders in the public sector. And so that's what we need um, to do. And if you look at, um, I mean, the first industrial revolution was the steam engine. Um, se the second was um, um, electricity. Mm -hmm. Third, um, uh, the second was second was electricity actually I can't remember even steam, but what what has changed? Um, why those the first three revolution first two were actually easy to adopt was because you could see it. So if you take for example automobiles, you could see a car moving very fast, right? Faster than faster than either people walking mm -hmm. or, or, horse. or horses. Yeah. So it was easy to adopt. The only problem to uh, scale was affordability. Same as electricity. Electricity, electricity was safer, um, it was, and it was, um, it was easy to, to see the benefits. Now, when you come to the, the, the third and the fourth, it becomes more complex. Affordability, understanding, education, and it's not easy to see the benefits. And also, people are embedded in, their, in the way they do things. Mm. And so that, that is the challenge, and that's why leadership now, so we, from an access perspective, is very key and paramount in, mm. in us um, getting to the fourth industrial revolution. And to do that, you have in some, especially in Nigeria, where you have areas that are still grappling to get into the third industrial revolution, mm -hmm. uh, electricity is very, very key for you to adopt that. But I mean, like, and I, for me, it's, you know, start, you know, think big, start small, act quickly. So at least adopt it in areas where we have for the industrial capability mm. and then the rest will follow. The rest will follow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but do you see us going to a very high, how soon do you think we can, we can get to that point where we're a fully tech driven economy in Nigeria? <laughs> I believe all the ingredients are there. So okay. it's like cooking. All the ingredients are, are there. We have the people you have. Nigeria, I mean, it's filled with young, intelligent people. Mm. And you can, you should, I mean, like, just take the banking industry for, as an example. I mean, in terms of mobile banking, you can count Nigeria as one of the most innovative and creative in the world because yeah. it, it was born out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Now, for us to really fix Nigeria, 
which is we are at a critical stage, it is only the leveraging of technology, technology infrastructure that can help us when you talk about, I mean, the, the essentials, feeding people, educa education, right, mm -hmm. and health. It is only by using technology that we're going to actually find our rightful place in, in the world. Absolutely. Let me come to you, AK. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, Zama. Welcome. Hi, AK. <laughs> happy to have you here. You know that already. <laughs> so I have a, a myriad of questions. And I would I would go to the tech person, but I, I want to understand something because everything starts from the power of the mind. And that's why I like our topic for today. It says the mind of a revolution leader because I believe that the mind has to, there has to be the correct mindset. So allow me to ask one question that would set the tone for many questions. Um, how would you say your upbringing, your family, has affected or influenced your mindset? Because I have been in a room with you, and allow me, please be patient with me. Let me recant this very short story. I recall there were those ones who were in a meeting together, and then you asked us a question, and you say, what was, and that's the banking sector, you asked us what our competition was. Now we were calling different names in the industry. But what blew my mind and still keeping me, and I can't forget it very soon, is that you told us that our competition was Coca-Cola, was mm. people in the retail sector. So it wasn't really our pet that we're looking at. We're looking at the mass. So that kind of thinking does not easily just spring up. Okay, so what influences you when you wake up in the morning, even with the tech that you apply yourself, what drives you? you those the kind of the way you think your mindset well the, well this very short answer is i mean to that question especially using that that example was uh, one has to be my father and the second one has to be my wife because she worked at coca-cola at that time and so like you know i could you know you could see um so you could you could you could um really understand how they were really thinking about the masses and it was easy to say if you could adopt that same type of thinking, um, you would really um, change people's lives. Because Coca people like Coca-Cola are not even thinking of, I mean, their competition, I heard, was water. So this is a company that you know, has a, a dominance in the Coke industry, but they, they see water as a competition. And for us, I mean, that was a, that was a striking moment. Now, from a, from, now, if I go back to uh, PGD, I mean, right from an early age, I think, he liked technology. He could see what technology could do. I remember, I mean, like my, one of my first toys was an Atari, Atari computer, uh, ZX81. Although I used it to play games, I mean, like you could see what the advantage was and how it could actually change and trans transform and transform and transform people. So, I, I think it's the ability, and I think this what ability to have to to laterally think about how you know solutions in one industry can affect how you. You, you, you use it in other industries. And the whole idea is to have an open mind and to have a diverse mind. And I think it comes from exposure. It, I think it comes from just trying, to, wanting to try everything. I've been fortunate, I think I've been fortunate to like, I've gone to several schools, I don't know, to several schools, tried several things and um, experienced experience everything. And I think that helps people in really seeing how they can use something in one industry or, or in one experience to help to, to Absolutely. help others. I think so what you're saying, what I hear you say, you have an expanded worldview, right? And so we are at that age where it seems like like you, you had mentioned, you know, when you answered the, the first question I posed to you about brick and mortar, a lot of people are still stuck up in this brick and mortar style of um of um what's called doing things. And as we are right now, the world is moving. Mm -hmm. I mean I was listening to I can't remember what what it was or maybe I read it somewhere by 2030, some people are saying, some economies are saying that they want to move away from the normal fuel-powered cars to elect electronically powered cars. Some of them would, would have driverless cars, right? These are things that are powered by AI, powered by, you know, technology. You know, so I'm just wondering, <laughs> in Nigeria, if we want to put certain things in place now to start to think about the future and move our minds away from that brick and mortar style and dependence on oil and all of that and seeing the potential in technology how do we even start that 
I will go back to my. <laughs> I will go back to my first stage. It has to be accessible, mm -hmm. and you only have to look at. I mean, there are great examples of how people in Nigeria have adopted technology. Mobile is the first one. I mean, before mobile, I mean, before mobile, you only had Nitel, mm -hmm. and uh, I think mobile started. GSM started in 2000. Ten years later, I mean, like you have over 50 million people using it and depending on it, and it also has also transformed lives and created new industries. And so, and why was it? Why, I mean, why, was, why were they able to scale? Because they made it accessible and they made it the cost of maintenance easier. And of course, with the drop in, the drop in uh, tel, uh, tel, telecom um, devices and data, because there was competition, they also created an enabling environment for the operators, right, to provide these services at a cost that people could afford. Okay. Because especially, especially when they had invested a huge amount of um, capital into, into making it work. So that, that accessibility, and then you had the perfect storm. You had you know, people that needed it, there was a demand for it. You had professionals in the industry, you had leadership, and so the, you had a leadership then that saw how it could transform, transform the industry. And we already seen, I mean like, Nigeria is one of those places where we have a lot of utilization of technology. The problem is that it hasn't been scaled mm -hmm. across the country, and that is a, that goes back to the same affordability infrastructure. And the government, I mean, is also trying to, to address that infrastructure problem by, you know, working with the telcos to make sure that you know, at least you have that if, uh, the, the the connectivity infrastructure Maybe across Nigeria. Know. Once you have that, now it's a case of affordable devices, mm -hmm. educating people, and also. Um, changing some legislation and regulation to make it more ch cheaper than the than the traditional alternative ways. Um, we've seen how, um, and so what you need is, as they say, disruption. Well, disruption is, I mean, disruption creates innovation. And like it or not, COVID has been one of the yeah. greatest disruptors that has promoted the adoption of some of, this thing. of, some of these things. Not, not only just COVID, the lockdown. So I think digital has, I mean, I think, I think digital has three, three phases. There's the awareness. Oh, yes. We I know, know it exists. We know it exists. <laughs> and, and then there's the appreciation. And the appreciation only comes from the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Because the lockdown meant that you had no choice. You mm -hmm. had to adopt. And then adoption is easier now because people see the benefits. Yeah. People actually appreciate, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it called? I remember, uh, AK, remember when the initial lockdown happened? And we we're going we to do, um, we we're going to host the show. And it was a back and forth, yes. Zoom or no Zoom, mm. this one, that one, and all yes. of that. That we had yeah. to, we had to get to that point where we had to settle mentally that some of the anchors might not come into the studio mm. because of COVID. So we might, we might be, able, we must make that room. And I mean, we've been better off for it now. We've been doing this since yes. since March last year. Some are able to come into the studio, some mm. are not able to, and we've been leveraging on that technology to continue the show. If not, it would have meant that the, sh the entire show would have been put on hold. You know, until when we are COVID free. And I mean, let me come to you, AK. Okay, so Usama, down to the meat of the matter. You're not you're no stranger to banking SMEs. Uh, you you know that, you know the game. Now my question is on why Sparkle is different. You know, I saw that recently you put out calling for tests for beta testing, but you identified two key problems that are not very common or people don't look at it. One identity. And we know how that affects access to finance. And then two, you talked about collaboration. So I, I want you to first of all help me address this. In collaboration, how is Vaco doing? Who are you collaborating with? You know, to all your stakeholders. Number two, how are you solving that identity problem? Can you solve it? Okay. So identity, the identity problem is a collaborative yeah, effort. And government has done a couple of things, especially for small businesses. Now for you to do anything or for you to like, for you to do anything to, or have a bank account as a small business, you have to have a tax identification number. Now that tax ident identification number is now connected to your CAC or your, 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 your company registration. For us, that is, that is identity in itself. And identity is just information. So now I know that this is a bona fide, and the, the basic information there is that this is a bona fide business that I can do business with, and there's some accountability because if anything happens, I can, I can, um, I can, um, I can go. I know where to can find them. I can be traced. Yeah. Now, so 
it means that I can do with, for them what we can do for individuals with their BVN. Because now bank, you can open a bank account as an individual without going to, uh, to, without going to, uh, to a bank. And so for, for Sparkle small business customers, they will be able to open an account just as easily, just as easy as an individual. And that's us leveraging on technology and leveraging on the identity that the, the um, government has, has put in place. So that's the identity. That's the, that's, and that, that is the identity. And of course, government is also, or public sector, the government are really driving the identity um, program from an individual and a business perspective. Now, on the collaboration, small businesses, you know, if you ask any, if you ask any, I mean, if I'm sure if I ask any banker what the problems of small businesses are, they will say access to finance, access to um, advisory services, access to market. Yes, we all know that, right? And we know that some businesses have money. Money is not the problem. And they have some advisors. But then again, th there is the support services. Uh, taxation is going to be a big issue. Where the tax you have over 40 million businesses in Nigeria, whether they're micro or, or large, you don't have enough tax capacity for tax consultants if they all decided to be compliant. Um, let's talk about legal services. How do they get legal, legal services? And then so that access to legal services, the affordability, and even understanding if, what they need as well, because it's not sometimes, it's not, it's not people don't buy um, drills, uh, people don't buy drills, they actually buy, um, they actually want to buy a hole. So for, a, for why, the legal services that you actually require are maybe for some documentation issue, for some security issue. So what we're doing with Sparkle is not providing, we're not providing a business account for, for, for small businesses because they can get it from any bank. What we're, we're enabling businesses is to be able to carry your business in your mobile. So when you open a Sparkle business account, you will have the option to like um, do your taxation, your payroll, your inventory management, and your invoicing. Now, if you can have that all in one place, the most it means that all your data is in one place. And it means that we can now help you using technology and using cloud computing to give you insights into your business. How much, how much are you paying? Your, I mean, like, where, where is your cost going to? And who are your best customers? Those are the things that will help businesses make quick decisions and to grow their businesses. It will help them reduce operational risk, rely less on people, and be free to do their business wherever they are. And, so, and, and of course, that will now make small businesses more sustainable. As we know, small businesses have a, like, like an average lifespan of two years, but with technology and with the right tools, they'll be able to more stay sustainable. And that is, as you know, um, small businesses are the engine of growth. And if we can do that, imagine 40 million businesses and half of them actually employing one more person, you're actually going to solve that, that unemployment problem in Nigeria. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm liking this. <laughs> but what role would power play in all of these things? You know, do, would the businesses, small businesses need to, because, you know, technology is connected directly to power, you know, availability mm -hmm. of power. I mean, the, with the epileptic situation of Nigeria and, you know, imagine trying to automate your business fully to, you know, a digital business, you know, how would that play out? You know, do, would they be requiring... <laughs> I mean, I, this, this is why people are coming to Nigeria because Nigeria is such a great place for really? opportunities. Okay. Now, the electricity problem will, cannot be solved by the traditional ways, Definitely. and that's why you're seeing a big surge in solar power uh, opportunities. Sure. Because f the you, there's the economics of taking power to a small village where the activities are minimal is is not sustainable. But with solar power and with the new technologies that allow people to pay as they go, hmm. right? These, are, these, these things are going to be, um, these, these things are going to be um, affordable and accessible. Now, if you look at the economic activity in a, in a small village compared to a rural, uh, uh, the, ur the urban, it's completely different. So it's like, it's like why would you want to put like 100 ki kilowatt power station in a place where they only use 20 kilowatt? It's hmm. a waste, right? So, and that the new technology solar, so with solar allows you mo to modular the energy solutions allow you to do that, and there are a lot of them swinging up in, in areas, and they are affordable and they are accessible. You just right need to, like I said, you just need the uh, conversions of right leadership from the private sector ah. 
from the legislation. So you are still bringing the leadership. Sector. No, yeah, it's a, collab it's a oh, collaboration. God. It's leadership. Nigeria. So if you are calling leadership now, mm. it means I'm not seeing any any end in sight right now. Because, okay, mm. <laughs> help me out. <laughs> Well, for me, I, well, I've heard all you have to say, and one would argue that maybe it's for the bougie people, maybe it's for the tech, technologically savvy people, the digitally savvy people. How will this solution appeal to... Um, the, do you have any plans for the on the banks? Do you have any plans for the, both the on the banks and the on the banks? Mm -hmm. You know, there's what you call specialization. You cannot be jack of all trades. There's some, there's some people who are good at unbanked. And so you have a lot of, a lot of um, organizations and, and people trying to solve individual unbanked problems. You have people trying to solve the agency problem. You have banks trying to solve corporate problems. Now, when you ask someone to solve all the problems, if you ask Paco to solve the uh, unbanked problem, solve the small business problem, solve the corporate problem, where is the capital? And then you have duplication of efforts and lack of specialization. So for us, we have said that for us, inclusion, like we've seen, small business is a key part of the economy. They, they, they are heavily excluded because they, have, they don't have access to many things. And we are building our business around those people and also individuals as well. And we know that by doing that, other people, we will now collaborate with the people who are trying to solve the unbanked problem. Mm. Because we also have a business, we will we'll, we'll collaborate with people who are trying to solve the energy problem the education problem, and all those other things that are actually needed to actually make this work. So it's not about, and I think that's what I try to say, it's not just about, you can't do it, no man is an island, and no solution is an island. You, you only have to take, the, one of the reasons why I think that you have a vaccine so quick is because there has been collaboration and open information, and that is what we need to go to. I think the business model for the 21st and the 22nd century is going to be about competing, yes, but also collaborating to share resources, because in the end, what the value of, a, of any company or any business is the number of active customers that are on your platform or on your tribe. Absolutely. Okay, Eki, we're going to take a very short break now. When we return, we'll continue this conversation and we'll open the phone line. Stay with us. We'll be right back.